Well, welcome to uh, part nine on our study in the book of Revelation. Before I um, move into chapter five, um, I want to cover a little bit about the Harpazo. We saw in um, chapter three, verse 10, you might say B, it says, um, I will also keep you from out of the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. That's referring to the great tribulation. Um, and what is Yeshua saying? He says, I will keep you out of the great tribulation. Well, that's referring to the harpazo. Most people call it the rapture, but the actual word from the original language was harpazo, uh, which means snatched up, uh, seized, forcibly, taken. Um, and we can see in 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 4, verse Well, starting with verse 13, it says, um, Believers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, those who have passed away, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Yeshua died and that he rose again, and so we believe that Yahweh will bring with Yeshua those who have fallen asleep in him. You can also look at um, 1 Corinthians 15.35, 1 John 3, verses 1 and 2, Philippians 3.20, uh, and uh, John 14, verses 1 through 3. Um, but here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, <clears throat> It says, according to um, the Master's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, we who are left until the coming of the Master, Yahshua, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep or who have passed away. For the Messiah himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, the teruah, it's a, um, an acclamation of joy, it's a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and that's Michael, and so here you see Yeshua is going to come with Michael the archangel. There are some people out there who say that Yeshua is Michael the Archangel. That's ridiculous. Um, and then it says, And with the trumpet call of God. This is not the trumpet or one of the seven trumpets mentioned in the book of Revelation. This is the shofar of Yahuwah. Um, and uh, if people say, oh, this is referring to, you know, one of the trumpets in Revelation no, um, this book was written, 1 Thessalonians was written way before the book of Revelation was given. And so it would not be re referring to something that didn't exist. Um, continuing, it says, And the dead in the Messiah will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up, harpazo, together with them in the clouds to meet the Messiah in the air. This is not the second coming. <clears throat> this is happening in the air, in the clouds. And so we will be with the Messiah forever. 
Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Um, moving just to the right a little bit, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we can look at uh, verse 5. It says, Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what's holding him back, uh, the lawless one, the Antichrist, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. We'll see as we go through the book of Revelation that um, uh, Abba Father is operating on a very specific and exact time clock, on a time schedule. Everything is scheduled. Verse 7, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back, and that's the Holy Spirit, will continue to hold it back until he, the Holy Spirit, is taken out of the way. The word taken there is gnomahi, means thundered, awakened, vanished, altered, assembled, and has to do with a marriage. I believe that's referring to the harpazo. Um, so the harpazo happens, and then verse 8 says, and then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. So um, we saw the harpazo mentioned in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Um, and then in chapter 4, we were at the throne in heaven, and we saw those who were dressed in white and who had crowns. Um, those who are taken in the harpazo um, are known to be dressed in white and um, are known to uh, be those who are given crowns. And uh, we saw that they laid their crowns uh, at the throne. So um, those things are all tied together. Let's move into uh, chapter 5, the scroll and the lamb. Chapter 5 reads, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. Now, um, the fact that this scroll had writing on both sides indicates a legal document. And this would be um, the title deed to the earth which Satan stole from Adam and uh, which Yeshua took back um, when he, after he was crucified, he went to hell for three days. And uh, there uh, he took the title deed back. I could do a whole other study on that, but enough to say that this is referring to that title deed of the earth, which has been uh, recovered by our Messiah and sealed with seven seals. Now, uh, it's a scroll. The seven seals are not, you know, all on top. There's one seal. You break that seal, and you can open the scroll, and there will be another seal on the inside. You break that one, the scroll opens further, and there's a third seal. It works that way. Verse 2, And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, saying, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth, or under the earth, could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Here where John says he wept and wept, in the original language it means convulsively. He was weeping convulsively. Um, and no one was 
found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. The, who, whoever could open it, they had to be a kinsman of Adam. And they had to also be one who is not subject to the curse that was laid on Adam when he fell and sinned. These are legal requirements. Verse 5, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. That, of course, is the Messiah, Yeshua. Verse 6, Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, sent out into all the earth. What are the seven spirits? We looked at that in chapter 1. It's the sevenfold spirit of Yahuwah, the Holy Spirit, sent out into all the earth to do what? To gather those whom the Father has chosen to give to his Son to gather those who would be taken, or at this point, who were taken, uh, in the Harpazo, uh, caught up in the air to meet Yeshua in the air, the beginning of a wedding, and uh, to go with him to heaven and to be with him forever. Verse 7, he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the believers of the saints. What is a saint? A saint is simply a believer. If you believe in the Father and the Son and in His Holy Spirit, you're a saint. Um, <clears throat> and also, as, as I noted before, um, we are in the portion of the book of Revelation where we will never see the word church again. The last time we saw it was in chapter 3, um, where the church, really uh, the original language is the ecclesia, which means the called out ones, those who were taken in the harpazo to meet the master in the air and to be with him forever. Um, that event is past tense at this point in our reading, and that is why you never see the word church appear in the book again, because the church is in heaven, and uh, the rest of this book is focusing on what's going on on earth, and you will only see saints and elect. Um, I have a separate teaching on that. Um, dig through my YouTube videos, you'll see it. But the saints are um, basically believers. Um, the elect are Jews, Israel, believers. And uh, the church are the called out ones who have left the earth at the Harpazo. So... Um, <clears throat> 
Verse 7 again, He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the believers. And they sang a new song. What we saw there, they're, they're bowing down uh, before the Lamb. Here, Yeshua um, receives his own. Um, and, you know, he's also recognized as the kinsman redeemer illustrated in the book of Ruth, which I mentioned previously uh, in our previous uh, video or one before that. Um, and this, aside from having to be a kinsman of Adam, he also had to be willing and further, he also had to be able <clears throat> um, when Yeshua was on the cross and in the English translations of the Bible he said it, it is finished in the original language he said tetelestai which means paid in full he paid the price in full not only for your sins and mine and the rest of the world, but also um, to uh, redeem the title deed of the earth, which was taken from Adam. So verse 9, and they sang a new song. It says, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased us for Yahweh. There's going to be some corrections here. If your Bible says you purchased men, uh, no, it says you purchased us, is the original language. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have made us, not them, you have made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve our Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we, not they, and we will reign on the earth. Those who belong to Christ reign with him on the earth for a thousand years. Verse 11, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. In other words, John looked upon a number of angels that just couldn't be measured, uh, could not be numbered. So many angels. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And in a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. How many things is the Lamb worthy to receive? <laughs> Seven. Power, wealth, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. Verse 13, Then I heard <clears throat> every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped him that lives forever and ever. Now, chapter 6, we start looking at the seals. Um, there are seven seals, 
we go through uh, six seals, and then the seventh seal introduces um, the uh, seven trumpets. And uh, you'll see seven, you'll six trumpets, and then the seventh trumpet introduces um, seven bowls. The, uh, so you go from the seals, the trumpets, the bowls, um, it gets worse, and worse, and worse. Um, there are these patterns, though, of six, and then the pause, and the seventh one introduces seven more, and so on. Um, but let's just dig in chapter six. It says, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals, and then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come and see. I looked and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. This uh, first rider on the white horse, this is the false messiah. This is the antichrist. Um, in Daniel uh, we see that he has, um, that he strengthens a seven-year peace treaty, a covenant, okay? And here it says, uh, its rider held a bow. The word there is the same word that we see in the Old Testament when Abba Father presented the rain bow as a covenant that uh, he would never destroy the earth with a flood again. The bow, the rainbow uh, in Noah's day, the bow here in Revelation um, would better read that he held a covenant, an agreement, uh, a seven-year peace treaty. And he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. Here um, we begin with chapter 6 through chapter 19. We are looking at the 70th week of Daniel. Um, illustrated in Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. I covered that in uh, part 1 of this uh, series on Revelation. Um, Verse 3, when the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. And then another horse came out, a fiery red horse. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given peace. It says, my Bible says a large sword. It should say a broad sword. This is the machaira. It's a short, broad sword used for close hand-to-hand -hand combat. This rider, fiery red horse, represents terror and death. Um, we could take a peek at Matthew chapter 24. And uh, verse 3, it says, As Yeshua was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Yeshua answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. The first thing he said to them, was be careful, watch out that no one deceives you. Uh, this Antichrist is going to deceive many. 
um, <clears throat> still in Matthew, verse 5, chapter 24, he says, For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, <clears throat> and will deceive many. You'll hear of wars and rumor of wars. On and on it goes. Uh, you can read Matthew, chapter 24, uh, Yeshua um, talks a lot about all the signs of the end of the age. And um, you could certainly look at that. And if you do, <clears throat> when you get to verse 36, where he says, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, only the Father knows the day and the hour. He's not talking about the second coming. He's talking about the harpazo. Um, he can't be talking about the second coming because the second coming is clocked out. Once the Antichrist is revealed, uh, and we'll see as we go through Revelation, uh, there are three and a half years until the second coming. So, I mean, at that point, you know the day and the hour, so to speak. You know. Um, but the, the harpazo, uh, which we mentioned at the top of this video, uh, that is the event where nobody knows the day or the hour. Um, <laughs> although, um, those who are watching, those who are absorbed in the Word and in their relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, they will not be surprised. They will know when it's about to happen. Uh, but let's get back to, uh, to chapter 6. And verse 5. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Um, this rider on the black horse represents famine. Uh, verse 6, Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages. This is, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. What? <laughs> what is that all about? This, um, a quart of wheat for a day's wages, three quarts of barley for a day's wages, that is referring to food being rationed. We see the rider on the black horse represents famine. And then there is going to be food being rationed. And the oil and the wine, that's referring to luxuries. Do not damage the luxuries. That's the rich will be enjoying luxuries, while um, others will be suffering with you know, famine and food rations. Verse 7, when the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come and see. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Technically here, it's referring to a ghastly green. Um, its rider was named Death. And Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Um, this rider's name is Death, and Hades was following close behind him. Death claims the body. Hades claims the soul. Um, and here the sword says they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword. That there is the Ramphea. That's the long sweeping sword able to reach out. Um, 
And uh, also note that, you know, all of these events we're reading about in chapters 6 through 19, they are sequential. They all happen after the Harpazo. Um, in Hebrew, the word for hell is Sheol. In Greek, the word for hell is Hades. Re hell is um, a temporary holding place <clears throat> located at the center of the earth, in the bowels of the earth. Gehenna, also known as the outer darkness, that's how you'll usually hear me refer to it. Uh, this is not the same as hell, and it's not in the same location either. Gehenna, or the outer darkness, this is a permanent holding place. Hell is temporary. The outer darkness, Gehenna, is a permanent place. It's eternal separation from Yahweh by choice. Just want to make that clear. Um, so it says, they were given the power over the fourth of the earth to, to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Now, you know, that could mean exactly what it says, wild beasts killing people. But, um, you know, beasts, quote-unquote, could also refer to viruses, like AIDS, green monkey virus, and so on. Um, those things could also fall into this category of beasts. Anyway, verse 9, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of Yahuwah and the testimony they had maintained. That right there is referring to those who were slain during the first four seals. Um, and we just looked at him opening the fifth seal. So these souls of those who had been slain, they were slain during uh, the opening of the first four seals, which we uh, covered. Verse 10, then, uh, rather, they called out in a loud voice, saying, How long, sovereign Yahweh, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they had been was completed. I watched, John says, as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth. This is a rich, deep black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. Um, just for a moment, if we look at chapter 12 in Revelation, and verse 9, we see the great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Um, I peeked over there because it talks about the stars in the sky falling to the earth. And um, again, could be literal. Usually, you know, in the Hebrew mindset, when you... When you look at the uh, word uh, and you say, is this literal? Is it symbolic? Is it uh, metaphoric? The answer is yes. The Hebrew mind thinks in all of those ways. So yes, stars will literally be falling or it'll look like they are um, if the earth is reeling and rocking and rolling. But also, um, the word for stars 
could also mean angels, and that's why I peeked over at chapter 12, uh, verse 9, because angels are cast out of heaven um, during this time as well. Um, then verse 14, it says, The sky receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Every mountain and island, literal, yes, um, uh, metaphorical, yes, symbolic, yes. This is also referring to governments being removed from their place. Um, I want to take a peek at Isaiah chapter uh, 34. And uh, Isaiah 34, verse 4. It says, all the stars of the heavens will be dissolved and the sky rolled up like a scroll. All the starry hosts will fall like withered leaves from the vine, like shriveled figs from the fig tree. Um, the heavens rolling up like a scroll. This is like a definition of four dimensional time space continuum stuff. Um, so we saw that uh, what's being said here in Revelation is also talked about in Isaiah. In Isaiah, um, we might be uh, dipping into uh, later on when we look at the uh, millennium uh, period later on in, in Revelation. Um, <clears throat> but let's complete verse uh, chapter 6 here. Uh, verse 15 says, Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves. They are still unrepentant. All this crazy stuff is going on and people are still refusing to worship Yahuwah. They still want to be God themselves. They hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Lamb. You heard it, it was the wrath of God. This is the day of Yahweh's wrath. This, they're referring to the wrath of the Lamb, Yeshua. Verse 17, for the great day, of their wrath, the great day of their wrath, the Father and the Son has come, and who can stand? The answer to that question follows in chapter 7, uh, and we'll pick up there next week. Shalom.